Right, it's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and a guy called John said, Matt, John again, just wanted to ask if you could do a video on general part search, i.e. using the code number for a wider search, maybe include full gasket kits, thanks. Right then. <laughs> so, uh, with the power of the internet, which is, you know, a fantastic tool if it's used properly, instead of talking about flat earth and the fact that gravity doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> when you look for, you know, part numbers and stuff like that, um, you go onto the you go on to uh something like Fowler's or whoever, you know, it doesn't really matter, any kind of parts listing, it depends where you live in the world and stuff like that. And then they will have a part number that says something like this, nine one six four, something like that. Now, a lot of the times what will happen is is you look at this part number and on your parts diagram it'll have a bearing just say like this, and then it'll say nine one six four right and then you look at other bearings on that parts list and it might say nine one six four and then there might be some that say nine one six five now these bearings are bearings just by um so some are shielded and some are not and there's very little differences if you look down in the listing you'll see that this actually says nine one six uh one one two four and then this one says 9161138, something like that. It's the full number you need. You just copy that, so basically these numbers have an extra digit on them. And you go, just copy that number, and then just, you can either, just say if you're looking for a Suzuki part or something, you can type in Suzuki, and then put that full number in, or just put that full number, and it'll come up with Partzilla and all these other places. And if you go trawling through them, because if you just say you're looking for a, an SV1000, it will just say this, and it will just say wheel bearing. Sometimes it says a wheel bearing, and it will say, you know, 20, 36, 7. It will say something like that, but sometimes it doesn't. This just isn't there. The sizes isn't there, aren't there. If you type in this, you'll probably, 9 times out of 10, find a website that does show you the bearing size. That's just how to get bearings. When you get gasket kits and stuff like that, like John has asked, um, I can kind of see what you... I, I, I'm guessing here, John, what you're trying to do is find a cheaper gasket than the OEM ones. I, as a blanket term, suggest that you don't do that. Gaskets, yes, they're expensive. The OEM ones are expensive, 100 quid for a head gasket or what have you. But I've had many gaskets over the years, Athena ones, and I'm trying to think of some other ones, some JMF ones, and some other ones, and this, that, and the other... And the quality massively varies. Um, you know, there are some... You know, there's a lot of horror stories out there how these gaskets work out, how they don't, you know. So you can get pattern parts or you can get the OEM, stuff like that. Uh, for gaskets, especially your... Well, nearly every gasket, to be quite honest. Your head gasket, you need to get the OEM one. The rubber gaskets, that are your rocker cover gaskets... Um, then rubber ones with little half moon shapes on stuff like that. I found that a lot of the aftermarket ones are shit. They've gone out of shape, they've shrunk, stuff like that, and they are a knobhead to fit. Head gaskets, I would never go anywhere but OEM. It's just my opinion. Base gaskets, same kind of thing. And then your other ones are stuff like your royal, uh, your water pump gaskets, your clutch covers, stuff like that. Now, clutch covers and your magneto cover, you know, your generator cover, that side of things. They're not too bad because it's just basically a shape and they punch some holes out of it, so it's usually that flexoid stuff. I've got that. Um, oops. So I have some gasket material in here. Um, fucking come on. Play the game. So this stuff, there's Firefly. So this is gasket paper. There's Firefly there. You can see what that is. It's massive. And then there's the flex... Flexoid stuff, this stuff, and these are all different thicknesses. I've got fucking, you know, as thick as that. It doesn't look that thick to you, but then we've got some really thin ones in here. You know, and I have loads of different ones, and these are oil-resistant joining made in England. Firefly, that's also made, that's in Rochdale. Uh, TBA sealing material, it says. Oh, fucking hell, it's all on the floor now. Um, and I have a plotter, so I can literally have these cut out beautifully. Uh, you can get them laser cut, stuff like that. Uh, or cutting them out by hand. Cutting them out by hand, the long you have to get a good 
you have to get some good punches so some good not the cheap horrible ones some good punches one with replaceable tips we'll do some gasket replacements um yeah for your clutch cover and the little accessory covers are fine water pumps never never i never get anything but oem ones I've, I've personally had about three or four leaks with using cheaper aftermarket ones stuff like that some of them you can't get hold of you can't get the oems anymore because they're really really old and you know you've pretty much got no choice um there is this thing about covering gaskets in sealant before you put them on covering them oh fucking hell if they are des they're designed to go in as they are dry then put them in dry you know what i mean they absorb oil over time and that basically helps them seal but you need to squish them as they are dry when you torque your covers down and then when they fill with oil they swell that oil basically repels shit from outside getting in but it also causes this material because it's basically capillary action it wicks out and bulks out and basically that helps just seal the whole thing um you know so yeah but head gaskets particularly i know too many people and i've done it twice myself where you buy cheap shitty ones and i say cheap they're, they're half price basically and it's just not worth it when you have to take it off again because it's leaking and blowing and fuck it's just not worth it um so yeah my advice is if it's for bugger all you know if it's like uh your rocker cover and it's these uh crankcase breathing vent ones or your pcvs or whatever yeah you can get away with shitty ones you can cut your own out my dad used to sit there and cut them out of the back of cornflake packets um you know boxes and stuff like that um back in the day but especially head gaskets and stuff don't don't try not to cheap out if you can you know and then you, people have the excuse well it's expensive well when you take the gasket back off again because she's pissing everywhere and she's leaking then you torque it back down again now you've crushed a crushable gasket and then it's you're never going to get it back and then you end up going to go and spend you know you go and get a new one and you go around telling your mates at bike meets and stuff oh yeah i did that it fucked me always go oem we you'll hear that from a lot of people who say go with oem stuff for for these sealing things you know we've been there had that experience and you know as they say cry once you know and get the job done so you know for a lot of things reusing head gaskets uh reusing i've done it a lot of times um reusing head gaskets depends how much of a what you're trying to do you know yes you shouldn't reuse head gaskets i've done it before i've had mostly successful results but one or two times it has you know been a dickhead and if you are you know if you are relying on your bike as your mode of transport you really just want to you just pay the money you know it is what it is head gaskets rarely ever go anyway um you know and the thing is you've got a, if you're taking your cylinder head off then you obviously have a big problem you've dropped a valve or something like that you know or pistons are slapping or something's going wrong or some catastrophic failure you know this is why your rocker cover you can't see this engineer but this rocker cover let's just move you that'd be easier <laughs> this rocker cover here um this is why they make these rubber you know these plastic rubber insert gaskets because they know you're going to do your valve clearances and you need to do them so they're going to take it off quite often because you're going to take it off quite often that's why they make this basically a reusable gasket however this is not like your head gasket your head gasket has raised sections that are allowed to be crushed to basically it's to apply a preload basically so when that gasket is deformed it's trying to push back out and it's trying to seal um reusing head gaskets we've all done it i'm sure we all have if you you know if you're not you know you're not new to all this and all the rest of it but yeah you get what you pay for stuff like that and people smearing both sides of gaskets with grease doing it it's just they don't do that at the factory and your brand new bike if you've got one seals absolutely perfectly fine they were designed to be like this otherwise it's no skin off their nose this is the thing if putting grease and all this shit and silicon on your gaskets now some gaskets do state you got to put a bit of silicon here a bit of silicon there water pumps gaskets are very much like that a lot of the time um, but it's no skin off their nose to say to you just add some more grease or this is how you do it we don't do it that way and people who turn around and say stuff like or oh, i had to put grease on my gasket because otherwise it leaked nine times out of ten because you've got a shitty cheap gasket or your surfaces aren't clean if your surfaces aren't clean you've got old gasket or shit on there 
then it's not going to seal. And it's like with all these things, with fucking putting greases and Loctites on things that don't require it and stuff like that is... You miss, you've been lazy, you know what I mean? So, to that end, what I'm going to do is we're going to get... We've got the ZX-7 engineer. This is for a very particular reason. We're going to look at the how much wear, stuff like that. The other ZX-6 engine, I'm going to do a series on this uh, my first engine teardown, basically. And we're going to go through, I'm going to show you... Just talk about... go Do it and go through absolutely everything of if this is your first one. And it might seem like it's a massive complex machine, which it is, but you don't do it like that. You just start off with, you, you do things in series. So this is literally, we're going to go through all the ways you can do it, the tools you require, and some shortcuts you can do and other ones you can't, or you shouldn't do, you know what I mean? So try and cover absolutely everything about you know, stripping and putting back together your first ever engine. Uh, what you will need and what you won't need, things you can get away with, things you can't get away with, and you need the correct tools, and so on and so on. You can get tools for fucking everything. You know, the spark plug pliers. I think I've got some of them somewhere. I'm a bit um, guilty of that one. But spark plug pliers, um, you know, there's piston ring pliers. There's there's all these tools you can get. A lot of them, a lot of that shit you don't need. You, you know, magnet on the end of a socket or an extension bar will get your spark plugs out once you've undone them, stuff like that. We're also going to talk about spark plugs and, and, and so on and so on with a, a test about spark plugs and the threads that they sit in. Um, we're going to follow up with the helicoil thing and the time certs and so on and so on. Hope that makes sense um, for looking at parts. Uh, generally, just you know, tech the hit and get the OEM stuff. And that's all I can really say. The reason why is because... It's twofold. It's the quality of the part and how it's disassembled and reassembled. So for light gaskets and stuff, if you clean your surfaces down so they are basically shiny and spotless and then and flat, that's the other thing, we'll talk about that when we do this. Uh, well, the ZX-6 engine. Um, and if you use the correct gaskets and everything else like that and follow the procedures then you're going to be all good and all right. You know, they build hundreds of thousands of these bikes on production lines. These guys get lazy, and even then, because they've got a procedure to follow, and they've only got the parts they need, and because everything's clean, and because everything's brand new, it all fits together. When you've got an old knackered engine, what you want to do is try and bring it back to at least some of that cleanliness, flatness, and so on and so on. And then, you know, it should just slot all back together. Like I say, these guys are pumping out on a lean line like crazy. And there are very, very, very few fuck-ups, you know what I mean? Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.